Hi everyone, it's Rihanna from Frugal Life and today we're doing a quick video on 25 things you should be decluttering in your house now. You may have noticed my t-shirt. I'm really excited. They just came in. This is my a sample t-shirt and I'm also getting a sweatshirt in the mail as well. I do have these for sale if you're a fan of the videos and the Facebook community. I would put a link down below and I price them absolutely as low as we possibly could price them because this is a frugal living. So this is to show your frugal living spirit but we do not want to charge you out the wazooey for them. So they are $15 for the t-shirts, $25 for the sweatshirts plus a shipping and that's as low as I could get them. If you want to purchase them, I will put a link down below. But let's get to the real subject at hand, which is decluttering your house. So if you've been here for my recent videos, you will see that I'm all about frugal minimalism this year. If you want to see my video on 20 reasons why owning less stuff is going to save you money, I will put a link up to it above, but stay here for this video to get your 25 tips on the next things you should be decluttering first. I'm going to try to rapid fire these ones at you because there are 25 and I like to keep these videos short. So bear with me till the very end. I guarantee you'll find at least one thing that is going to make your house less cluttered this year. Let's start with number one. Number one is beauty products. If you are anything like me, you have a drawer full or a cabinet full of beauty products, beauty product samples, things that don't work out for you, things that you got as gifts and that you just cannot bear to get rid of because you spent good money on them. Well, beauty products do expire and keeping expired beauty products past their lifeline can be actually damaging to your skin, your eyes, whatever you use those beauty products on and guaranteed if they've been in your drawer or your cabinet for more than six months to a year, you are never going to use them before they expire. So declutter them now and just keep the things that you really love. Number two is going to be lotions, oils, and other fragrance items that you don't like the smell of. So I have a couple candles like this and they were Yankee candles so they were rather expensive. I did get them as gifts and I just now realized that I should be decluttering them. The same goes for air fresheners you don't like, colognes you like, anything that you don't absolutely adore the smell of, you should be getting rid of. If you've not used it, you can sell it. If you have used it, then go ahead and get rid of it safely in the disposal way that is good for your environment. So if you throw them in the trash, if they're toxic, don't throw them in the trash put them where they belong in your community that takes hazardous materials. Um, but I believe that candles can just be tossed in the trash if you don't like them, um, if you don't like the smell, or find somebody to give them to who is willing to take them off of your hands. But definitely get them out of your house. If you don't love the smell, you're never going to use them. Number three is paper copies that you can scan instead. So I'm guilty of this because I'm from a time when we didn't scan in our paperwork. We kept it for years. But now I understand that I can scan all of that paperwork in and keep it on a hard copy of my computer and then a backup on something like Dropbox. So these are really great things that you can keep on your computer that you don't have to clutter up your house with. There are very, very few things that you actually need to keep the real paper copy of. Birth certificates, marriage certificates, things like that. Everything else can be scanned and the paper copies can be shredded. Remember to shred, not throw away your paper copies of important documents um, if you are getting rid of them because you don't want that information to be stolen and your identity to be stolen. So get yourself a shredder, shred the ones that you don't need and keep them on file on the computer and then on something like Dropbox. Number four is kitchen utensils. So we recently repainted our kitchen. I will show pictures of it in a later video, but we did the whole thing for under a hundred dollars. And while we were doing it, I emptied out all of the cupboards and the cabinets and was able to declutter a lot of those items. One of those things was our utensil drawer. I realized that I had three drawers full of things like serving spoons, uh, can openers, utensils and spatulas and all of that. When I actually went through them all I was able to declutter most of it and get it down to one drawer. So most of us keep way too many things we never ever used. If you have not touched that item in a year or more then absolutely get rid of it. You are only going to use certain items in your kitchen and the rest of it do not need to be kept. This one is crazy. I was decluttering my blankets and sheets and pillowcases and I realized I had three sets of queen sheets. I don't own a queen bed. We had a queen bed in our spare bedroom for quite a while for my niece. We actually converted that room over to a hobby room and kept a twin bed in there. And I had sheets that I don't have a bed for, so we got rid of those. So make sure you go through your linen closets and declutter anything that you will never use because you don't need it or you don't have the right size bed, etc. You don't need to keep those things on hand just in case. They're very inexpensive to replace down the line if you need to. 
Number six is clothes that don't fit. Ah, another one that I am totally guilty of because I always think I'm going to be a different size someday. Well, I am going to be a different size someday. I am losing weight. I'm looking to lose 116 pounds and I've already lost 15 of that. I guarantee you I will be going down in size. But when I look at my closet, I realize I'm not gonna be wanting to wear the clothes I wore in 1995. So just because I was that size then does not mean I should keep them until I'm that size again. Fashion change, your tastes change, I guarantee you, you're not going to wear to wear something that's out of date by 10 years. Go through all of your clothes and get rid of anything that doesn't fit now. You can definitely replace it. I recommend replacing clothes at a secondhand store, but you can definitely replace them anywhere else. Unless it's extremely sentimental, like a wedding gown or a prom dress, declutter everything in your closet and drawers that don't doesn't fit right this second. So I do this one about once every other month or so, and that is to declutter my Tupperware type items. I don't have actual Tupperware brand because they're ridiculously overpriced, but I do have things like Ziploc or Gladware brand um, plastic containers that I purchase at grocery outlet and other stores on clearance. When they get worn out and chewed up by the dogs or lost lids or things like that, I absolutely declutter them because they're easily replaceable. A lot of the times you can replace them for free by just using containers from butter and other things if we go with what our grandmothers used to do. Um, so these things are very inexpensive, easy to dispose of. Don't keep Tupperware that doesn't have lids. Don't keep lids that doesn't have Tupperware. Um, and I say Tupperware loosely. Don't keep plastic containers that don't have the corresponding lid or container. Number eight is board games and puzzles. It is very unlikely that you have an entire closet full of board games and puzzles that you play every single week or night or even month. So that is something that you can easily declutter. People outgrow the games that they like. They out grow the games um, that their kids play. So make sure you keep that nice and tidy and only keep the games and puzzles that you guys play on a regular basis. You can actually donate these things um, to uh, foster homes, to thrift stores, um, senior citizens home, love puzzles as long as they're not missing pieces. My aunt was actually in a senior home for um, a very short time before we took her in and they adore donations of puzzles. So these are great things to donate and things that just keep um, cluttering up your closet and your drawers that you're not gonna use. So some people have games that they absolutely love. If your family's a Yahtzee um, family or a Monopoly family, keep that game and get rid of the rest of them. Magazines, books, newspapers that you do not use. So these are great things to declutter. Books nowadays can be got on Kindle or Audible or other types of electronic devices and you don't have to keep paper copies of. I myself am a book lover. There are some books that I keep that are collectibles like the Little House on the Prairie books, but if they are just one-off um, novels that I have read once I'm never gonna read again, I absolutely donate them or I use paperback swap to get rid of them and get new ones. I will put my link above to how to use paperback swap if you're interested in them, but you don't need to keep tons and tons of books or magazines or newspapers in the house unless you're a book collector. Oh my God, the next one we are all guilty of. How about those remotes, keys, electronic devices, and cords and power cords and chargers and things like that that we will never use again. People have drawers full of chargers that belong to phones they had 10 years ago. People have electronic cords to TVs they haven't seen in five years. So go through your drawers and cupboards of all those things and dump every single one of them that doesn't belong to something you are using right now. You do not need to save it in case you're going to use a TV from 1992 five years from now. So those are just collecting dust. Get rid of them now. Number 11, we are in the electronic age. We do not need to keep things like DVDs and CDs and even cassettes. Some people have cassettes um, in their drawers that they're keeping for cassette players they don't own anymore. So unless it's a very, very sentimental item, you can get rid of all of these. CDs can be converted to electronic files that you can play on your computer. Um, DVDs as well can be converted to electronic files you can play on your computer and you don't need to keep them spread around the house. Um, unless it is something you're keeping for your kids because they watch it in their room. If you already watch your TV um, on your computer like we do in our house, then we don't need to keep our CDs or DVDs anymore. Everything can be done on the computer. So just evaluate if this is good for your household or not, but most of the time people have a huge collection of DVDs um, just sitting on a shelf or VHS just sitting on a shelf that they haven't touched in a year or two or even more. 
Number 12, we love furniture in my house and we tend to collect it for free and then keep too much of it. We have more bookshelves than we know what to do with. So we understand that we have to purge those things every once in a while. So declutter your furniture at least once a year and get rid of things that you don't need and will never use. Number 13, I am so sentimental and I keep things for a long time that I realized I never really liked in the first place. So gifts and other reasons that you get knickknacks and souvenirs and things like that can end up cluttering your shelves and again, and those end tables with things that you don't really love. So this is an easy thing to go through your house for. Pick up each item and as Marie Kondo says, see if it sparks joy. You don't need to keep a specific item just because somebody gave it to you as a gift 10 years ago and you really love that person. It doesn't mean that you love that item. So if you can, if you don't love it anymore, take a picture of it for memories and then donate it to somebody that will love it. You don't need to keep tons and tons of knickknacks for sentimental value. If you don't love the way it looks, then get rid of it now. Number 14, this is a hard one. If you have kids, get rid of toys that they have outgrown. The best way to do this is to help them put them in a box and put them on a shelf and tell them they can take them out when they want them. A lot of times they will not think of them again. If they haven't touched it in six months to a year, donate those or sell those toys. They will always get new ones, right? If it's particularly sentimental, like a Barbie doll or a rag doll, um, you can take a picture of it for memories and maybe even keep one or two items for sentimental reasons, but you do not need to keep hundreds of toys because they love them at one time. They will feel better if you teach them to give them to kids that need them and they will get them out of your house so they don't collect dust. Number 15 is another hard one if you have children and that is children's artwork. Kids that love to draw, paint, and color tend to stack up reams and reams of artwork that they love to give to their family members. The best way to do this is to take pictures of it and keep it on a computer in a file that you can see over and over again. Post them on your Facebook so you can show them to your kids over and over again, and then tell them that the actual artwork can be donated or given away um, to somebody else. So you don't need to keep reams and reams of it. You can also create a memory book for them of particular pieces if they fit in a binder um, with protector sleeves, but you just definitely um, need to keep select pieces. So let them choose one out of every 10 pieces of art to keep for a while and have them discard of or donate or give away the rest. Number 16, this is something big in a household of people that give flowers. So we don't give flowers in my house. I just don't like to give um, um, things away that cost a lot of money that die. But some people love to receive flowers and when you receive flowers, you typically receive a vase with them, which ends up being in a cupboard forever again for sentimental reasons. Collect all of those faces and donate them to a thrift store, a hospital, a senior center, fill them with flowers and give them to somebody else. Nobody needs more than one vase per room per household, um, maybe even not that many. So decide how many you realistically use on a basis, keep your two favorites and get rid of the rest. Number 17 is cheap or dull knives. So if you have upgraded your knives recently or in the past at any time, you typically keep the other knives because you feel bad throwing them away because you spent a lot on them. At one time we had three full sets of knives and realized that we are two people, there is only two people in our house that cook. So we got rid of the extra knives, the ones that were dull, the ones that were old, the ones that were broken. Um, we donated all of the ones that were still usable and dumped the rest, recycled the rest, um, and we only keep one really nice set of knives. So you do not need to keep tons and tons of knives unless you're going to have a steak or barbecue party that requires a hundred steak knives, you can definitely get rid of old knives as soon as you get new ones. Number 18, if you are health conscious like we are, you might have reusable water bottles. We tend to go through these a lot. We keep them until they are no longer usable or convenient to us and then we get a new better one. Um, and then we feel bad about getting rid of the old one because it cost money. Well, it's better to just give that away or donate that to somebody who could actually use it than to keep an entire cupboard full of reusable water bottles. So nobody needs more than one to two reusable water bottles per family. Maybe you have a little one for travel and a big one for the house and all of the rest can be donated. This is something that definitely creates clutter in a household and is very unneeded. Number 19 is coffee mugs. People collect coffee mugs, way too many coffee mugs. Uh, coffee mugs, especially if you're a parent or a teacher are something you get a lot as gifts and you can end up with 
up to a hundred coffee mugs. Nobody needs this coffee mugs. Everybody has their one or two favorite coffee mugs and all you really need is one per person per household. And have them pick their absolute favorite and donate the rest. Number 20 is outdated and overused sponges, mops, brooms, and other cleaning supplies. So people keep their sponges way too long. You can keep your sponge as long as you can keep putting it in the dishwasher and disinfecting it and cleaning it. Once it starts to fall apart, absolutely dump it immediately and get a new one. If you use reusable rags for your dishes, that's even better, but don't keep tons of old icky sponges or decrepit brooms and mops and things that are bad for your household because they carry germs um, just because you're afraid to throw them away. So this is one thing I give you permission to be non-frugal about. Don't over keep cleaning supplies, dump them as soon as they are no longer useful. Number 21, and we are getting to the end. I promise you stay tuned for three or four more. Number 21 is old raggedy towels. So I do not recommend you throw away your towels. We use them, use them, use them until they are dead, but we don't use them um, for our baths until they are dead. So keep them for your body until they are kind of raggedy, then use them maybe for pets, then cut them up and use them for rags, then throw them away. So go through your towels and determine which ones can be got rid of, which ones can be moved down to the rag pile, and which ones can be dumped out of the rag pile into the Track. You don't have to keep them until they're completely threadbare. This is another thing I give you permission to only keep them until they're no longer useful. Number 22 is extra purses and accessories. So unless you are a purse fiend and you collect purses, um, you tend to switch purses and then put that purse that you are no longer using in the closet and never ever touch it again, but feel bad about throwing it away because it costs money. Another thing I am giving you permission to get rid of, go through your closet and get rid of all the purses that you haven't used in a year or two. Um, donate them to somebody who can actually use them. I personally don't spend more than a dollar or two on purses and I keep them for a very long time. I buy quality, very nice purses that I love at thrift stores for one to two dollars. I keep them for a year or two and then when they're no longer useful or no longer the right size, I redonate them and get a new one. So I never have more than one purse in my house at a time. Number 23, and I figured out that I was doing this myself, and that's pictures and memorabilia that you do not understand. So I went through some old pictures that I inherited and realized that I only knew who 10% of the people were, and when I asked my friends and family if they knew who those people were, they did not remember either. So we get rid of all the pictures of people that we don't remember. I felt a little bad doing it because I feel like a picture is a snapshot of a moment in time, but why should I keep a picture of somebody that I don't know and I can never figure out who they're going to be? Um, so unless you are a genealogist for your family and someday you will track down that ancestor, it is okay to get rid of old pictures. And a way you can get rid of them without feeling bad about it is to put a notice up on Facebook that you have old pictures for crafting or art and people will take them for free and then use them for things like art um, and decor and other things. So if they're really old pictures, people love to create art with them. If they're just snapshots, it's okay to throw them away or shred them. Two more, number 24 is old electronics. You do not need to keep your iPhone two or four in your drawer forever. You should actually be getting rid of your old electronics like phones right after you get a new one because it still has some value to it and you can actually trade it online for money. So don't keep those old phones too long. You don't need to keep them around just in case. I guarantee you will never touch them again once you get a new phone. If that new phone breaks, you won't go back to the old one, you'll get another one. So it's okay to get rid of old phones, old TVs, old Kindles, any electronics, as soon as you no longer use them, it is great to sell them, make more money, um, and perhaps put some money back into your debt or other things that you need to save money for. Number 25, and I do not have any of these in my house right now, but I used to work for a company where I went to trade shows all the time. And when I went to the trade shows, they give you a lot of tchotchkes and knickknacks. So you'll get free stress balls and free tote bags um, and free little toys and things like that to play with and you end up taking them all and putting them in your bag and taking them home and then feeling bad about throwing them away because you took them. Um, so it's just bad for the environment, all that plastic and junk that you're never going to use. When you go to a trade show or something like that, take a business card and don't take something from them that you're never going to use. So you don't need that junky $1 water bottle. You don't need that silly stress ball. You don't need any of those things. And if you have them in your house, pile them in a box and give them away to your local thrift store. You don't need them. And it is a great thing and easy thing 
thing and a very um, non-emotional thing to get rid of. So that's it for today, 25 things that you should be decluttering now. Again, remember I do have that video up above of 20 reasons why you should own less stuff if you're wondering why you should declutter all of these things. If you liked my videos, remember it means so much to me if you like the video down below. If you want to comment, please go ahead. I love talking to all of you and please hit that subscribe button so you can get the notification of the next video.